Jersey. On March 26, 1887, the frozen corpse of a brutally murdered young woman was found by four brothers on Central Avenue near Jefferson Avenue in Rawway. Her throat was slashed and her body was covered in bruises. Four brothers traveling to work at the felt mills by Bloodgood's Pond in Clark, New Jersey, found the young woman lying off Central Avenue, several hundred feet from the Central Ave Bridge over the railway. Her body lay at the side of the road in a pool of blood that had frozen in the cold. Her throat had been cut from ear to ear, her hands were wounded, and the entire right side of her face was extensively bruised from an administered beating. This shocking turn of the century, brutal homicide laid subject gruesome similarities with the Whitechapel murders across the pond. These comparisons would be relit by historian ripperologist the next century. More on that later. Description The rawway Jane Doe appeared to be in her early twenties and was described as attractive, with brown hair and blue eyes. She was found clad in dark green cashmere dress that had been trimmed with green feathers and a fur cape to protect from the cold. She also wore yellow kid gloves that were described by the paper as foreign good shoes, a black hat made of straw with red-colored velvet trimmings adoring it, a black dotted veil, and a bonnet. Other belongings were found in the Rawway River. The Crime Scene Edited for Clarity A young woman was found by four men several hundred feet beyond the Central Avenue Bridge near Jefferson Avenue at around 6.30 a.m. The body was frozen to the ground in a puddle of blood almost three inches deep. Her throat had been slashed in two places nearly ear to ear. Both her hands were lacerated and her face was bruised. Due to the presence of the victim's jewelry and expensive clothing, police ruled out robbery as a possible motive. Near the river, an officer found a small black bag that contained small articles, some that might have belonged to the man. He also found a basket containing nine eggs, but all but three had been broken. Across the fence, a pen knife with a turquoise handle was discovered, presumed the murder weapon. Along with these personal items was a satchel containing a rubber eraser bearing the name Timothy Burns. Timothy Burns. And a hairbrush initialed TB on the back. <laughs> Footprints in the mud suggested the victim and her male attacker had come from opposite directions, and the killer fled to a marketplace where police lost the trail amongst the other footprints. Police investigated Timothy Burns, finding a man by that name had been inquiring about incubators from a local farm. Then the basket of eggs was thought to be his. However, Burns could not be located, and the lead went cold. Railway Jane Doe's killer has never been found. It wasn't as if the authorities did not have any leads. From a trashy family that lived only a few blocks away, to a scam artist whose wife up and left him, along with multiple confessions from strange characters whose stories ended up not checking out. Let's discuss them. Two men that lived about a block and a half away, a Clinton Froat and his cousin William Keach, were also suspected of the crime. They were bad news kind of guys in the neighborhood with propensity of violence. It was found out later that Froat had actually held captive other foreign women in his basement in an attempt to try to make them marry him. It's thought that Jane Doe may have escaped. However, to the dismay of the town folk, the Broadway police had cleared them of a crime. Apparently, their alibi checked out. That didn't stop many from assuming guilt, including one woman who came forward after the Froats had finally moved out of town. On the 13th of March in 1887, another suspect by the name of Casper Schumbeck claimed to have done something horrible in New Jersey, though when he was questioned by police, his confession was found to be fraudulent. One of those who viewed the body, a Mr. Watson, believed the victim was his wife Lillian Snavely Watson. He produced a recent picture of his wife, which oddly was almost an exact facsimile of the victim. Days before the murder, Lillian had been on a train between Chicago and Pittsburgh when the train wrecked and Lillian couldn't be found. It was feared that she had either been killed or had become insane 
and wandered away. Eventually, Lillian was found alive and well in Omaha. Her husband, however, disappeared before he could be arrested for bigamy and petty swindling. The aftermath. Her murder was the subject of national headlines, and hundreds of travelers descended upon Rawway to speculate the ghastly remains. In morbid nineteenth-century custom, investigators had her embalmed body photographed. Dressed in the clothes she was found in, these images were circulated widely. The identification attempt failed. Neither she nor her killer were ever identified. She was buried in May 1887, next to the Merchants and Drovers Tavern in Rawway Cemetery. It is believed by some that the spirit of the young murder victim, since being interred, has continually haunted the Rawway Cemetery. For a more in-depth and scholarly look into Rawway's Jane Doe, check out Mrs. True Crime's channel and her video, Remember Me, the Unknown Woman of Rawway. She does an excellent job. Links in the description. Jersey barbecue. We sleep on Jersey.